Good morning, everyone. Will Dupree here in the KXAN live studio coming to you for another edition of First Warning Weather University, which you see back there. So joining me here in the studio this morning is meteorologist David Yeomans. David, thank you for being here once again. Every Friday morning you're here. Yeah, I'm liking our routine, Will. It's and, nice. Uh, hopefully folks stuck at home these days are sticking with us and enjoying it too. Yeah, so today it's an appropriate topic for the weather conditions out there. Yes. And I want to bring up quickly how it looks. So tell us why this particular topic fits with what we're seeing out there. So, uh, you know, we've got 13 or 14 of these videos on kxan.com slash fwwu for you guys to check out at home anytime. But when uh, this Friday uh, routine of ours comes around, we think, what's relevant? You know, is it a hail risk? Is it a tornado risk? What should we talk about today? Uh, there's not a cloud in the sky and we're going to be record hot this afternoon. So we actually have a video on that website called Why is the Sky Blue? And this is a question that I'm asked sometimes uh, on school visit by elementary schoolers. It's a question I'm asked frequently by adults too. So uh, our uh, producer, Eric Henriksen, did a really nice job with our our little friend Sonny in this one. You'll see him actually become an astronaut to explain part of the reasoning in this video. All right, so let's take a watch. Once again, First Warning Weather University with David Yeomans. Why is the sky blue? Well, it turns out it's all thanks to our atmosphere. To an astronaut in space, the light coming from the sun is actually white because it contains every color of the rainbow. Now, if you break down each of those colors, their little waves of light are actually each different sizes. This is called their wavelength. Blue is the shortest and red is the longest. These wavelengths are important because they affect which colors of light make it through the atmosphere to our eyes. When the light hits particles that make up our atmosphere, the size of those particles allows many of the colors with longer wavelengths to sneak right through. But the blue light with the shortest wavelength is just the right size to hit and bounce off of those particles. This separates the blue light from the other colors and scatters it across the sky, coloring the whole sky blue. That's all true when the sun is overhead, but when the sun is at a less direct angle, like during sunrise and sunset, the light has to travel through more atmosphere to reach our eyes. This means that all the blue gets filtered out, and only the longer wavelength colors, like the reds and oranges, remain. Once again, that was uh, meteorologist David Yeomans and one of our creative producers here at KXAN, Eric Henrickson, put that video together. David, really cool thing. I had really never thought about why the sky was blue. I just had always been assuming that it was sure. that color. So this is a good explanation, not only for me, but for a lot of people out there watching. Well, thanks, man. And it's interesting when I was researching this, you know, it's easy to forget that when you're an astronaut, if you're up in the space shuttle or the International Space Station and you're out of our atmosphere, out in space, sunlight is actually white because it has every single part of that light, every single uh, light on the spectrum, if you will. And when you have none of those, it's black. That's the void of darkness. When you have every light on the spectrum, that makes white. Uh, so what changes the color for us on Earth is how the atmosphere, our little shell of air around the Earth, filters out that light and scatters some of the light. And it all has to do with, like we were talking about, the wavelength of these little colors of light. So every color of light and they're all, you know, a tiny little fraction of an inch, so you can't see the difference with the naked eye. But every different color of light has a different wavelength. Some of them have waves that are really long, if you looked at them, let's say, under a microscope or something. Some of them have shorter wavelengths, like we were talking about. So when they hit the little invisible particles of our atmosphere, uh, you know, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, the gases that we live in and breathe, uh, some of those different wavelengths are scattered, some of them are absorbed, and some of them make it right through. So uh, that's also what changes the color as we talked about when uh, the sun gets at a lower angle. So when the sun's right overhead, it's only going through, you know, a little bit of atmosphere. But if you move the sun to a lower angle, all of a sudden it's slicing through more of that layer of atmosphere. So that changes also how the light is uh, scattered, and it changes the light that we see. Very interesting, very informative too. I just want to give people a shout out a little bit. We have some people watching with their kids today. Great. Uh, one woman named Elise in Hutto said, even she learned something. So that's All pretty right, awesome Elise. too, yeah. Great. If you're watching with your kids, please let us know whom you're watching with and where you're watching from. We would love to be able to share that with everybody and we would 
you know, it kind of gives us an indication that, yes, people are watching and they're really <laughs> finding out stuff about this. You guys are actually awake with us. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and I know we got at least one question in. We uh, did. This, right? this was from uh, Scott Madsen, and he asked David, if the sunset colors are caused by the reds not getting filtered out, why do some sunsets really light up the sky and sometimes there appears to be no sunset? That's a great question. So uh, we talked about, you know, everything I was just saying is assuming there's a clear sky. So what can also change this is clouds. And if there's a cloudy sky, all of that light from the sun is blocked. That makes a gray sky in the day and you never see the sun. So if the sun rises or sets or is right over your head, it probably doesn't matter. Sometimes, to answer his question, when there's no sunset or no sunrise, sometimes that's under a clear sky. If there are no clouds, then the sky, sure, it kind of lightens up over on the horizon and it gets blue eventually as the sun gets higher or the opposite as it sets. But you never see like a spectacular sunrise or sunset that people want to take pictures of and send us in the weather department. Uh, what changes them and what makes the most spectacular sunrises and sets are partial clouds in the sky. You don't want full clouds because then it blocks all the light. If you have partial clouds, you can get the light kind of sneaking in and lighting up those clouds from underneath, which is really spectacular. So if you want a really great sunrise, which rises in the east, right? You want to have a clear sky to the east so the sun can actually get to your eyes, but you want to have some clouds coming in from the west. So the sun sneaks in from this direction and it hits these clouds over here and it actually hits the bottom of them and it illuminates them for us down here on earth to look up to. And if you want a really pretty sunset, you want the opposite. You want clear skies in the west so you can see the sun setting and you want clouds in the east so the light can kind of sneak in and, and light them up. Also, some places have prettier sunrises and sets under a clear sky than others. Uh, places like Miami, when I went to school there, they always have beautiful sunrises and sets. And part of the reason is just because there are different uh, little particles in the atmosphere, whether it be more pollution, actually that does make a prettier uh, picture, or uh, things like salt spray from the ocean. If there are little invisible particles of salt floating around, uh, if you're close to breaking waves, uh, that can actually change how light gets scattered also. It's kind of interesting. That is interesting. Um, I will say that when I lived in Kansas right after college, it yeah. had the most beautiful sunsets really? I've ever seen. Yeah, it was incredible. I've never been. I have to go. There you go. Add it to your <laughs> list. We do have some people watching, and I want to be able to highlight some of them. Um, Abby Streit says she's watching with one happy six-year-old and three-year-old and right. mom, and they all learned something today. Thank you, David. Good morning, so shout guys. Shout out to them. Thank you for saying We that. also have somebody that said they drew you a picture, David. Uh -oh. uh, Marie... Marie in San Marcos says, my kids love you, David. My oldest daughter drew you a picture about clouds and rain. That's so sweet. Can you email me, <laughs> david.yeomans yes, at kxan.com or get my Instagram. It's uh, David Yeomans Weather. Send that to me. I want to see it. I'm going to comment on that picture and have yes. her send that to you so Thank we you. can share that out. Um, so one more time, if we want to show this video, David, tell everybody what they're going to see. Yeah, so this gets a little technical. It is why is the sky like you see outside today? Why is it blue? Why is the sky blue? Well, it turns out it's all thanks to our atmosphere. To an astronaut in space, the light coming from the sun is actually white because it contains every color of the rainbow. Now, if you break down each of those colors, their little waves of light are actually each different sizes. This is called their wavelength. Blue is the shortest and red is the longest. These wavelengths are important because they affect which colors of light make it through the atmosphere to our eyes. When the light hits particles that make up our atmosphere, the size of those particles allows many of the colors with longer wavelengths to sneak right through. But the blue light, with the shortest wavelength, is just the right size to hit and bounce off of those particles. This separates the blue light from the other colors and scatters it across the sky coloring the whole sky blue. That's all true when the sun is overhead, but when the sun is at a less direct angle, like during sunrise and sunset, the light has to travel through more atmosphere to reach our eyes. This means that all the blue gets filtered out, and only the longer wavelength colors, like the reds and oranges, remain. Our video one more time uh, with another lesson from meteorologist David Yeomans for all the parents out there and their kids are being homeschooled. We wanted to provide something a little extra for you all to learn from. One question that did come up while that video was playing for the second time yeah. is uh, KB Metcalf is asking about this particular saying, and I, I was just saying a moment ago that my grandmother used to say this a lot, is that uh, the saying goes, red in the morning, sailors take warning, yes. red at night, sailors delight. 
Is there any truth to that? You know, there is actually, and it has to do with what we were just talking about. So, <clears throat> as you picture this, imagine all of the weather in the U.S. at least, in the northern hemisphere, typically moves from west to east, right? <clears throat> so if there's a storm approaching, usually there's some clouds to the west that are then coming toward you. So, if the sun rises in the east, like we were just talking about, it, under a clear sky over here, so you can see the sunlight coming in, and it lights up these clouds coming in from the west that are heading towards you, that means there are clouds heading towards you, right? Huh. And maybe a storm's heading towards you. Opposite, if the sun sets over here in the west, and you can see it setting under a clear sky there, and it illuminates clouds that are moving away from you to the east, that means sailor's delight, right? Hmm. Red sky at night, sailor's delight, because sure. the storm is moving away from you. Now, anytime there's a pretty sunset, does that mean that there's a storm leaving or sunrise, storm coming? No, it just means there are clouds, right, one way or the other. Uh, but, you know, clouds can be a storm sometimes, so... I think that is partially accurate, at least. I love that. So all that, all that time that when I was growing up, my grandmother said that it was true. And, and this was in Kansas, or this was somewhere? this was in Arkansas. Yeah. Okay, there are no yeah. sailors in Arkansas. That's though. true. <laughs> <laughs> at least that would be another conversation to be had at that right. point. Um, David, we also want to talk about the weather today. Again, such a beautiful view out there. Uh, yes. Really nice morning out there, but it's going to get hot too. Yeah, so when you look at that blue sky, and a lot of us will be from the backyard this afternoon, imagine all those little tiny particles of gases scattering that blue light wavelength across the sky. That's what's going on. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be hot as ever, Will. This is going to be the hottest day of the year. So far, we've only hit 95, which is, you know, pretty hot considering it's only late April. Today, I think we hit 97 the record is 96, so lots of remarkable things about that temperature. Uh, at least the humidity is low, so you know it's like a phoenix type of heat. It's kind of a dry heat, as they say. Uh, but 97 is pretty hot, so uh, it's windy as well. That southwest wind is actually part of the reason that we're getting so warm. And that'll be another lesson for another day about why that does that. <laughs> for people who may want to be able to see your videos, tell them where they can go. Um, we're not only providing these on Fridays, you guys can go online and see them for yourselves too. Yeah, anytime. And we've got, we just, uh, I just wrote another one yesterday. Oh, and wow. our producer, Eric, just sent me another finished one yesterday as well. We've got 13 or 14 on the website, kxan.com slash FWWU, First Warning Weather University. Uh, you can also just Google FWWU, and it's the first thing that comes up. And you can watch them all there anytime. And again, we've got like 10 or, 10 or more in production right now. Uh, so we're going to keep rolling these out, and we'll let you guys know on uh, the newscast, on my social media too, uh, and on the website when we add new ones. Yeah, We, have, we haven't even featured all of them that are on the website yet. I know there are so many more to go. I think we've done six at this point. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. So again, this is the website you can see right here next to David. Um, kxan.com slash fwwu all of them are right here that's one right after the other and i think the second one right there is why is the sky blue so here we go you check it out again you can do so so uh thank you so much for having me back will yeah we do appreciate that um i was going to go back through the comments real quick to yeah, see please. if anybody had any other questions for you um if you have some time of course uh <laughs> katrina saying Y'all rock. I want to be homeschooled. Smiley face. So <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> we happy to, we're happy to educate you too, uh, Katrina. Yes. Uh, Jessica Hearn uh, Hume says she's watching with her, six, with her nine-year-old son, I should say, in Dallas. Great. So all the way up there in North Texas. We Jessica, appreciate you all watching. Thanks for watching. That's awesome. Yeah. Dara also says that you rock, David. I had to share <laughs> that too. You rock, David. Uh, Roxy says she's watching with her kids in uh, Kyle. Her... I, Think two two kids, Gabriel and Emmanuel. I'm gonna get those names out there too. Gabriel and Emmanuel from Kyle. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, That's it's awesome. a good morning for sure. All right, everybody. David, thank you again for being here. Yeah, thank you, and everybody have a great Friday. Enjoy the heat this afternoon. Yeah, and we'll be back next Friday with another edition of First Warning Weather University. You can join us right here at 9:30 in the morning. We will see you then. Thank you all for watching, everybody. Please, everyone, stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. We'll see you later.